thank you, uh, hi everyone. So, my name is Leo, I'm a PhD student in uh, IMT Atlantic, so just over there, or there, I don't know, really know. Um, and I'm working in the chair survey at Cyber CNI, which is uh, an industrial chair uh, focusing on uh, um, protecting uh, critical infrastructures. So, uh, a lot of things uh, tied to the IoT, industrial world, uh, CPS, and this kind of stuff. Uh, I have a few references at the beginning of the presentation, so when the slides are published, uh, feel free to have a look if you're interested. Uh, I'll talk about, uh, I'll talk to you about uh, Fidelity Learning today and its application to uh, 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 internal detection systems. Uh, so I'll start uh, with a bit of uh, explanation on uh, the goal of my thesis and uh, what is Fidelity Learning and why it's uh, relevant. And then I will present to you the state of the art of this topic uh, because uh, as I have started my thesis uh, one year ago almost, uh, I, know, I, I have not made, made uh, much work on that. And uh, then I will give you an overview of what we are planning to do and uh, uh, what will come of it. Okay, so uh, first, first uh, what's uh, my thesis about? Uh, I'm focusing on collaborative security, which is extremely vague as a topic uh, because it uh, includes uh, both uh, uh, technical collaboration between machines but also between humans. Uh, so I've started with a literature review, of you, a literature review uh, on uh, these four topics and uh, raised uh, observations uh, about the caveats of collaboration in security. The first one is the lack of collective knowledge. Uh, by that I mean uh, like uh, some sort of collective database which would contain uh, everything we need uh, to know about attacks, vulnerabilities, uh, architectures, I, I don't know, absolutely anything that obviously does, does not exist. Uh, there are initiatives like uh, the, the MIST from, uh, platform for collaborating or uh, I don't know the CVAs, CVE um, uh, index uh, from the MIST and this kind of stuff, but it's not uh, something global. The second uh, caveat is the lack of incentives for stakeholders to share data, or more precisely, the number of reasons for which they would not share data. So that could be illegal, that could be uh, for, for pride, that could be cultural impact, so there are a lot of reasons. Third uh, point is the problem of isolation, uh, especially architectural one. So that's uh, more uh, tied to uh, machine learning. When you want to train a model, you need a lot of data. And if your data is isolated, you, are, you don't have enough uh, uh, elements to train something accurate. And uh, finally, uh, the problem of uh, resiliency. Uh, so when you have a collaborating system, you, have, you need to have an architecture to support it. And it's often centralized. Uh, and centralized system uh, have a, their own set of issues. So we built this question, how to federate knowledge and uh, uh, different mechanisms between non-trusting parties. Uh, this raised uh, a lot of sub-questions, uh, mainly about the data we want to collect and, and how to share them. And uh, we have decided to uh, start working on technical collaboration, and that's why creating uh, learning will, will be uh, interesting. To just lead you to this, uh, to the following of my presentation, I'll start uh, with a step back to uh, the principle of uh, intrusion detection systems. So they are born in the 90s, probably, uh, with signature-based uh, detection system, uh, which are uh, their goal is to recognize patterns. So, for instance, an IP address uh, hash, uh, something like that but they are uh, inefficient against unknown attacks. So to uh, counter this issue, uh, we started to use machine learning to improve that and uh, we train uh, the, our detection system on the uh, behavior and uh, try to identify unknown behavior that we categorize as anomalies. Um, but they need a lot of data to be accurate and uh, the, that data needs, need to be hetero heterogeneous enough to avoid, avoid sorry, bias. So that's what in the that's why in the beginning of the century we started to look at okay, so that's, that's 
the NCAT uh, collaborative action detection systems uh, with the goal of sharing the data. So this is uh, uh, interesting, but it's raised on, on, uh, on another set of issues. So I talk about uh, the single point of view as an introduction. But centralized some systems such, such as that also have uh, latency and bandwidth problems uh, when, compared to, when compared to local detection. Uh, there are also the issue of data sharing. When you want to train a model on a lot of data, you have to share that data and thus expose uh, uh, this data to the public potentially. So you weaken your security by wanting to improve it. And to solve this kind of uh, issues have been uh, proposed for directed learning. In, uh, so this is a new concept, quite a new concept. It has been proposed by Google in uh, 2016, I think. And uh, the objective is to build a, a unique model from distributed data sources without sharing the data, but the model itself. So this figure is supposed to represent um, what could be a federated learning based detection system. I've taken the, the context of uh, smart factories as a, an example, but it could be anything. So at the bottom, you will have your uh, IoT devices. Uh, we take uh, the, uh, an, uh, something like a, that I've got IoT gateway that is supposed to capture all the traffic and has, have the power to run uh, both the learning algorithm but the execution of the model afterwards. And there is this uh, 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 federation entity, which is quite uh, vague uh, at the top, uh, because uh, there, there are um, many implementations possible and it's not easy to, to, need to represent them all. So I have to in an abstract uh, approach, but the goal is the same. This federation entity will start with an initial model that will be shared with all participants. Each participant will improve the model on its local data and share uh, back the uh, improved model, which will be merged with the model of every participant. And this is an iterative process. So we start uh, at the one round, improve the model locally, share it together, and et cetera. Okay, so that's for the concept. So what I've uh, done uh, until now is uh, focusing on the state of the art of uh, implementing federated learning for uh, uh, intrusion detection system. And I've tried to structure uh, the literature into uh, a taxonomy, which is uh, absolutely uh, unreadable here. Uh, but I, there are a few fields that are more important than the others, uh, especially the type of data you are training your model on, uh, which will uh, heavily uh, influence, like we have seen this morning, uh, the type of, of model you will choose. And the, the model will also influence how you aggregate the model afterwards, since uh, different models have different uh, mathematical properties, the aggregation can be uh, the same. But mostly, uh, what uh, people do is that they average the parameter of the model and they obtain something that is supposed to be uh, uh, the, the perfect uh, model of the, uh, from the fusion. And the fourth uh, parameter is uh, what I've called the machine learning location. It reflects the architecture. So you can train your model on the device itself. You can train your model on a gateway like I've shown. You can uh, train your model in, even higher in your network architecture. It's depend of uh, your use case. Uh, I've continued to uh, structure uh, data by trying to build a reference architecture. So this is a, a bit uh, difficult to understand, but uh, if you're interested, I invite you to have a look at the slide afterwards. Uh, but the goal of the architecture is to represent any uh, system, fitting system that have been implemented, but also uh, any system that would be implemented in the future. Uh, and the goal is to match uh, the building block of such a system with the taxonomy uh, that I've showed uh, just uh, before. And uh, sadly, um, over the uh, 
like two to three years, past years, there are only seven works that have been uh, identified and that had uh, this approach, so it's, it's quite new. Um, but uh, with seven work, we can already draw some conclusions, like you uh, easily see, that most approaches uh, use a gateway to uh, both collect the data and train the device. You can also see that the neural networks are massively, massively represented uh, in the data set, in the, in the set, sorry. Uh, so that's, that's not very surprising given that uh, neural networks are also prominent in the simple machine learning uh, approaches. But uh, that, that's some conclusion you can uh, already draw. And I've made some hypotheses, so here's a glimpse uh, at some of them. Uh, the, first, the first one is about uh, time-based techniques, uh, which uh, uh, can be uh, really uh, useful to detect uh, uh, patterns, but only on constrained devices. Like your laptop, it has too many variables and too many traffic uh, uh, each second, so it won't perform as uh, well. Uh, the second one is about the performance and its, its relation with the architecture. I assume that uh, from the related work, that the closer the model is to the device, uh, the, the poorer the performance will be for the entire system, uh, simply because you, are, you will have a, a local model too specific and too dependent of your devices. Uh, but these are also uh, uh, approaches that could uh, solve this issue. So, for instance, use a classification method before your detection to train uh, not a model per device, but a model per class, or use a ponderation to uh, uh, individual average of models to deal with the uh, models that could be too far from the, uh, the rest of the, the participants. Another hypothesis could be that uh, you can't train your model on features that are not uh, applicable to all the architectures. If you train your models on a specific network with specific devices and specific properties, uh, you might uh, uh, not be able to detect uh, uh, correctly uh, the event in another kind of architecture. So that's all hypotheses I want to uh, uh, prove or disprove in the future. Uh, uh, with uh, the publishing of uh, a survey uh, that I'm writing. In the future work, I have uh, the, the issue that I've been uh, mentioned by Mathieu uh, earlier, is that uh, all this work uh, use different data sets, have a different architecture, different model, and I'm not able to see uh, exactly uh, how they compare with each other. So what you want to do is to re-implement the reality work and try to establish a baseline uh, to compare their, their performance uh, on a, a unique data set, or at least several data sets, but uh, train all models with and all architectures with all the data sets, uh, a bit like we have seen with the huge table uh, uh, from the presentation earlier. I also uh, benefit from uh, working in an industrial uh, chair, like I said. So we'll try to implement these techniques on a, a use case from the partners. The first one will be obviously IT networks because it's the easiest to implement and uh, virtualize. The second one would be uh, all these smart factories and uh, constraining device use case uh, and seeing if the, uh, the the algorithm and the takeouts you have, you will have from the first use case uh, does apply to the more constricted device of if we need to change uh, many parameters. And finally, uh, the sensor focused environment. So instead of training the models on the communication between devices, focus on the values that uh, your devices uh, generate. Uh, and see if uh, there are a lot of differences or not. Okay, so that summed up uh, my presentation. Uh, if you have any question, I'd be glad to take them. Uh, if not, uh, feel free to contact us afterward if you're interested to visit the chair or what we'll see what we do. We are, uh, we are a few blocks away, so feel free to come. Thank you very much. <laughs>